Good morning. Welcome to United Methodist Church this Sunday morning, the 27th of June. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And indeed, hallelujah. Thank you to the bell choir. This morning, I'll start with a few announcements. First off, um, if you need a facility during this time, we have the bathrooms available on that wall. The green doors are marked for men and women, and so uh, if you need it, they're there. We thank you, thank you, thank you for wearing your mask and following the COVID protocols um, and social distancing and all that good stuff. Uh, we are very aware that there are still several within our midst who are unable to get vaccinated. That includes children and some of our most vulnerable. And so I thank you for taking care of them and, and showing your care for them by being um, masked and practicing social distancing. The food pantry will have a distribution this Thursday. We are changing the time to 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So food distribution this Thursday, 10 a.m. If you know persons who are working it or persons who are receiving from it, please let them know that that distribution will be at 10 a.m. <laughs> Next Sunday, we will begin worshiping in the sanctuary. Whoop, whoop. We'll still follow COVID protocols, so bring your mask. Be ready to sit at six feet distancing from households, uh, but we will be very glad to see you inside next Sunday, 10 a.m. Monday, Bible studies continue at 4 o'clock via Zoom with Pastor Schlintz. And speaking of Pastor Schlintz, she's preaching today. We are in the midst of what pastors in the United Methodist Church called Move Week. And what that means is we have several pastors moving from one place to another, uh, assuming other appointments or retiring or coming into ministry, right? Um, along with that, our brother Jim Garrison is moving from Dos Palos and Los Baños today. He is not able to uh, serve both of his congregations today. And so, Pastor Slintz will preach here, and in a few minutes, I'm going to slip on over to Dos Palos and preach over there. So thank you for sharing your pastor. Um, also today, at 5 o'clock, the kids. Bring your kids. You have kids? You want two hours of a break? Bring them. From 5 to 7, we'll take care of them. We'll have some programming with them share a word of the good news and even feed them so five to seven bring your children right over here and, and. today is interesting again for the united methodist church it's move day there's lots of transitions with that comes also transitions with other parts of leadership in the united methodist church one of those transitions will be for our district superintendent deborah brady she has been our district superintendent for the past several years for the Central Valley. She is returning to pulpit ministry in Modesto. And so this will be her last week as district superintendent as well. In that venue, I'd like to uh, take a moment to uh, give us all an opportunity to say thank you, Deborah Brady. Okay? So what we're going to do in just a moment is Adam... Woo -woo. <laughs> who is tech savvy and can handle this <laughs> is going to use the camera and when I raise my hands everyone just scream thank you Deborah Brady God bless you okay are you ready one two three thank, thank you Deborah, Deborah Brady. Brady God, God bless, bless you. you we'll be sending that as part of our video from United Methodist Church of Merced, letting her know that we appreciate her work. Thank you. Also with transitions, uh, well, actually this is a transition we all get, right? We all get 24 hours in a day and thus we age at the same rate. Um, someone today is celebrating a birthday. This person is someone we all know and love dearly and who contributes to this church in countless ways. <laughs> I'm not even gonna start to list them because I'm sure I'll miss five billion of them. So. That being said, please join me in singing happy birthday to Nadine. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nadine. Happy birthday to you. Gladney. 
Nadine's here. We're glad you're here. Wherever you've come from, we are glad you are spending this time with us, whether you're online, whether you're on the yard with us on the courtyard, or whether you are um, catching us later on in this week. Welcome, welcome, welcome to United Methodist Church of Merced Sunday morning worship. We are glad you are here. You are welcome. Can I say one more thing that we're very glad for today? This is uh, just coming up on July 1st, which is the third anniversary of Pastor Aya at UMC Merced. So uh, she has been reappointed to Merced, yay, and uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, well, let's get on with worship. What do you think? Let us pray. Join me in a word of prayer. As we are still for a moment drawing near to worship you, O oh God, we take just a few seconds to remind ourselves why we are gathered. We listen, God, and you speak even through the background noise of the world around us. In this time together, open our ears and our eyes to see your vision for this place, for our part within it, for the ministry in your world. Teach us lead us guide us hear our prayers touch us and fill us with power enabling us for service wherever you might take us to your praise and glory we pray and all god's children say amen, amen. there is one more thing i'd like to do i'd like to invite the durbins forward durbins durbins if your last name is durbin please come forward Now, they are not part of the United Methodist pastors that get moved from church to church. <laughs> Just let's be clear about that. However, Jenny and Ron are moving. And so, uh, that's okay, I don't bite. Well, it's a different story. Thank you, Nadine. Okay, you wanna go ahead? I wanted to put together a collection of photographs for the Durbin's goodbye, and I found over 100 pictures. <laughs> the Durbin's have been involved in so many aspects of our community over the past 14 years, and we're so grateful to God for that. Jenny shared many beautiful memories with me, and I'm sure she would with you too if you asked her. Will you raise your hand if you've been involved in a ministry with the Durbin's in some way? <laughs> what a connection we've had. The Durbins came to Merced from San Diego for Ron's job at UC Merced and connected to UMC right away. In fact, they connected to UMC before they arrived here. <laughs> uh, Mark and Adam were 13 at the time and Anna was 8. Now Ron is retired, and though their move was delayed because of the pandemic, it was always their intention to move back to San Diego. So Ron, Jenny, and Anna will return to their home, family, and friends in San Diego. Mark will continue teaching in Patterson, and Adam will remain as administrative assistant and music director here at UMC Merced. Praise God. Amen. Raise your hands if you will in a distance touch that we might pray a blessing for this family and their journey forward. Gracious God, we thank you for your abundant gifts. And right now we thank you for the grace of the Durban family in our midst. We have indeed been blessed. We have indeed been blessed. We also pray now for their journey to come. We ask your grace and love and mercy to carry on in their lives, and may they know your care and your amazing presence for every step of the way. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. 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 And just a small token. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship this morning. The response is, come to us, O oh God. With friends and strangers, with family and neighbors, we gather. Come to us, O oh God. 
Come among us, healing God, with the love which never ends. With faith reaching out to touch, with hearts straining to trust, we hope. Come, Come to, to us, us O oh God. God. Come among us, friend of the broken, with your compassion which makes us whole. With word and wonder, with silence and song, we wait. Come, Come to, to us, us, O God. God. Come among us, dryer of our tears, to lift us to our feet, to follow you. Come, Come to, to us, us, O God. God. Amen. Beth's going to share the word with you in one sec, but first we have one more piece of special music from our bell choir, directed by Nadine. This one's going to feature Lynn Morrison on the recorder. Here it goes. scripture is from the book of Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 13 and 21 through 43. Jesus heals a woman and Jairus' daughter and when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side a great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue Jairus by name and seeing him fell at his feet and implored him earnestly saying my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd get hollowed. Sorry about that, that's so loud. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood, blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up 
and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus perceived in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembled and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God bless the reading, the hearing, the interpreting, and the doing of the Holy Word. Amen. Over 15 months into this pandemic, we're more aware than ever of the significance of touch in our lives. On March 8, 2020, we passed the peace of Christ in worship with touch and celebrated communion with a common cup. After worship, we enjoyed fellowship in the fireside room and then ate lunch, a bunch of us ate lunch together the next day, 24 of us met here for Bible study, followed by a dinner out, which had been our habit on Mondays. We shook hands and embraced with hugs we loved, but also took for granted. Six days later, the church doors were closed. We went into an isolation we thought we'd be out of by that Easter. Yet what happened instead was an era of masks, social distancing, quarantines, even hospitalizations and deaths for folks we know. Our world was turned upside down. One of the things we missed so much was touch. As we be begin to emerge from this pandemic, we know touch may change. Though grandparents who finally got to hug their children again won't willingly give up that gift. Can I get an amen from anybody? <laughs> Touch is so important to our humanity, and touch is significant in scripture too. Divine touch is transforming, power giving touch, not always skin to skin. Jesus understood though the importance of physical touch in communicating, connecting, changing individuals, even our world. Laying on of hands was then and is now sacred. So let's talk today about therapeutic touch. Two touch miracles from Mark that Betty and Bat just read, that miracles are not the norm and ways we can reach out and touch others like Jesus did. Some people aren't wild about being touched. It may be from a history of inappropriate touch or being hurt, phobias, or less experience with touch. A young man in my Fairfield church had EB, a skin disease that makes touch painful. 
yet even he appreciated a very gentle touch. I, for one, am a hugger, and I have truly missed hugs. Anyone else here a pre-pandemic hugger? Touch is one of the five basic senses, and the skin is the largest organ in the human body. We were designed to touch and be touched in gentle ways. Babies found a bond, and infants discover their world through touch. I remember hearing an irritated mom in a store one time exclaim to her child, do you have to touch everything? But it's not just children who like touch and cuddle time. It's significant throughout our lives. And studies show friendly touch reduces the stress hormones, cortisol and norepinephrine, and releases the positive hormones of oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin. Helps regulate our digestion and our sleep even boosts immune systems and relieves pain. Similar studies have also shown that touch deprivation increases stress, depression, anxiety, and that affects all systems. I had a woman in one church who came always for a hug in the receiving line after church. She said to me, Pastor, this is the only hug I get all week, and I need it. During this pandemic, handshakes, high fives, fist bumps, back pats, shoulder squeezes evaporated along with hugs, as have all points of contact we make closer than six feet apart. Perhaps we've become more aware of the difference therapeutic touch makes. Maybe that can help give us more insight into the touch miracles in today's scripture from Mark. The disciples had been on a wild ride with Jesus recently. Right after Jesus calmed storms on the Sea of Galilee, they came to the eastern Gentile shore and had a dramatic encounter with a demon-possessed man who Jesus healed. But after he drove the demons into the pigs, the people were awed and agitated by the loss of their livestock. They got back into the boat and return to Jewish territory. The word about Jesus was definitely out. As soon as the disciples landed, throngs of people were there. Jairus, a synagogue leader, emerges from the crowd and falls before Jesus, begging him to heal his daughter. So Jesus begins to accompany Jairus home. But then, an interruption. Interruptions happen, don't they? Ever been a victim of a funny thing happened on the way to wherever? Interruptions are definitely a part of everyday life. One time I was signing a marriage license when someone interrupted me, and soon I got a letter from the County Register of Deeds saying that United Meth is not a recognized denomination. I finished writing out United Methodist Church and returned the license so the marriage could be legal. We all know about interruptions, but this woman's interruption had to be very stressful for Jairus. After all, they were on the way to heal his dying daughter. Time is of the essence. It was a covert interruption the woman would have been content to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and slip away healed, no one knowing the difference. Unlike the known wealthy, powerful male Jairus, the unnamed penniless outcast woman would not be welcomed by the crowd. She had been bleeding for 12 years, and according to Mosaic law from Leviticus 15, she was declared unclean while bleeding, not allowed to touch anything or anyone, lest they become defiled as well. She spent all her money on doctors and only got worse. 
Well, it's no wonder. Treatments for her ailment mentioned in the Talmud, including carrying the ashes of an ostrich egg in a linen rag around the neck, or mixing different herbs and wine, shouting, be gone, flux. Can you imagine? You might be surprised at the number of herbs, salves, miracle springs, and concoctions that have been suggested to me to cure my ALS. Chronically ill people, even today, can suffer at the hands of diagnostic tests and would-be cures. So maybe we can imagine her distress, depression, destitution, and desperate action on this day. The bleeding woman had heard about Jesus, so she dragged her weak body to a place she wasn't supposed to be, believing if she but touched the hem of his garment, she would be healed. So she did it. And it would have been a nice, quiet healing. She touched from the ground, from behind. Well, if Jesus hadn't called her out for the power he felt go out from him, by doing so, he received her confession, gave her the opportunity for testimony, and proclaimed to the potentially appalled crowd that she was now healed and clean. Moreover, instead of being disgusted by her unpopular illegal presence, he showed his compassion, his inclusion, and her value by calling her daughter when he declared, your faith has made you well. Now her wholeness was body and soul, doubly healed by Jesus. The narrative then returns the journey to the journey to Jairus' house when the news comes that his daughter had already died. The interruption, deadly delay. Can you imagine his devastation? Jesus comforts him even as he calls Jairus to the confidence that brought him to Jesus in the first place, saying, do not be afraid, only believe. At their home, Jairus witnesses Jesus say to the girl, Talitha Kumi, little girl, rise. As she gets up, there's surely the commotion of jubilee all around. And yet Jesus attends to the details of life, asking them to give the girl something to eat. Mark ends the narrative mentioning that the girl was 12, 12 years old. As long as the girl had been alive, the woman had bled. And now Jesus healed them both. By Mosaic law, the encounter of the touch of the unclean woman was forbidden. Jesus' touch of the dead body of the girl was forbidden. And yet the compassion of Jesus healed both of these women. By faith, they were healed. The faith of Jairus and the faith of the unknown woman touches that made a difference to miracles of grace. But what if the miracle doesn't happen? Everybody loves a miracle. It had much to do with why the crowds followed Jesus and why the word about him traveled so quickly. We love miracles today too, don't we? When we hear of survivors and miraculous sparing of life, we rejoice. But what if the miracle doesn't happen? What about the person we prayed for who died anyway? What about the terminal disease? that doesn't go away. Scripture is consistent with the theology that God wants us to be well. We were created for wholeness. So why isn't everyone healed miraculously of all infirmity? Let me ask you, how many of you expect to die at some time? Hebrews 9.27 guarantees it. And we know it in experience. We know of death 
and we know of infirmity. The number of ways these earthly bodies can fail is astronomical. There are many biblical accounts of miraculous healing, but so are there examples of healing that never happened. The Apostle Paul had the gift of healing, and yet his missionary companion Timothy wasn't healed of his stomach ailment. And remember Paul's own thorn in the flesh? 2 Corinthians 12 says he pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away and got the answer, my grace is sufficient for you. Most of you have heard my simple theology of suffering. If you remember it, say it with me. God didn't do it, but God will see us through it. A well-meaning pastor said to me when I was diagnosed with ALS that I should examine my life and see what God's telling me here and pray harder for healing. I, just as well-meaning, asked, oh, so you do not expect to die? God didn't strike me with this affliction to grow me, punish me, teach me a lesson. But God allows free will so we can be in relationship with God and natural law to prevent overall chaos. God can heal. God does heal. But most of the time, God will not take us around or over or beneath an affliction, but rather will be with us through it for every step of the way. God's grace is witn witnessed in miraculous work in the midst of whatever we go through. I am a witness 18 years into ALS that God's grace is more than sufficient. It is amazing and abundant. I haven't been healed in my body, but I can testify to amazing grace on the journey of miracles of daily living. To someone who says they haven't seen a miracle, I invite you to hold a newborn baby. We know the miracle of Nina Fong in our midst, right? Look into the eyes of compassion. Hug a loved one. Hear the testimony of one freed from opp oppression. Pick a flower. Eat a freshly grown fruit. Watch a sunset. Or as Rex Freeman says, he's blessed each day he wakes up alive. If we but start to count our blessings, we know how truly rich in miracles we are, how blessed we are, no matter what, eternally. Amen? We can experience the touch of amazing miracles. We can also be the miracle for others. In 1970, Diana Ross first sang, reach out and touch someone and make the world a better place. The Bible gives us many examples of this, especially as we care for one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus says, love one another. There are countless ways we can reach out and touch others through supporting ministries, volunteering, provision, a helping hand, intentional acts, even smiles and eye contact and words of grace. And with our words and deeds, through our touch and presence, even as Jesus transferred sacred power through the hem of his garments, he can use us to transfer strength, courage, hope, support, and faith. We can lift up others when we offer our hands, touch, comfort, words, prayers, gifts, and presence. Jamie Boleyn tells the story of her family's food angel. When her mother divorced, she had no income, 
no way to afford groceries, and suddenly there appeared food boxes outside their door. This went on for months until she landed a job. She never knew who left those groceries, but she felt they saved their lives. Don't you think Jamie's family felt that touch of grace as a miracle from God? The ways we reach out and touch someone in Jesus' name truly reflect divine miracles. In conclusion, I invite you today to reclaim touch as we emerge from this pandemic. Whatever it might look like now, expect the miraculous touch of God on our lives and be that miraculous touch on the lives of others. Love one another, live in grace, for the touch of our Lord makes us well and passing it on makes us all more whole. Amen? Let us pray. Creator God, you made us to be blessed by the gift of touch. Gracious Lord, you defied the fear of defilement in the day in which you, divinely human, used touch to miraculously heal those whose faith was integral to bringing about their wholeness. You touch us with the miraculous today, even when our bodies may not know physical healing this side of heaven. And you call us to reach out and touch others in miraculous ways in Jesus' name. Holy Lord, as we emerge from this pandemic and always, help us to be a people confident in your powerful touch on our lives and convinced of your miraculous power to make a difference in the lives of others in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lost our say. Save 
confession. Merciful Lord, we are hurting and know our need for healing. Our bodies break and fail. We encounter a myriad of situations which threaten to destroy our lives. We have been consumed with anger, fear, and hostility. We want to place our trust in you, but we have trust issues. Help us to truly trust your mercy and love, O Lord. Heal and forgive our fears and sins. Open our hearts to receive your mercy and help us to become your disciples. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Hear these words of assurance. Feel the touch of Christ on your heart. You are healed and forgiven. Rejoice. God is with you now and always. Amen. We are all invited to pass the peace at this time, whether it's by a wave, a peace sign, a hand heart, an air hug, or an I love you sign in sign language. Please greet one another in Christian fellowship. <laughs> Touch someone. <laughs> Let us pray. Healing, Lord, there are so many situations we have encountered that require healing and restoration. We try to do the best we can, but can't rely on our own strength and skills to bring about the complete healing that is so desperately needed. Help us to place our trust in you. Help us to work effectively to promote situations of healing and hope. We have come before you with so many concerns on our hearts. There seems to be no end of the desperate needs of your people. O oh Lord, and yet you love and hear all of us as we pray. You surround us with your love and healing mercies. You lift us gently and give us courage to work for you in ministries of peace and love. We have so very much to be grateful for in the midst. Gracious God, we rejoice this day for the many miracles of provision, caregivers, prayer warriors, acts of kindness and love that totally matter. As we emerge from this pandemic, we're thankful for worship formats to meet needs, opportunities for blessed relationships, and even events now. We continue to pray for vaccination wisdom and safe practices, even as we rejoice for hopefulness and pray for those still seeking hope. Thank you, Lord, for purpose and meaning, your beautiful creation, future journeys, and your guiding presence. We express special thanksgiving this week uh, for the birthday today of Nadine and also Haley, and this week and last for Cindy, Richard, Sean, Anne, Larry, Clarice, and Barbara and anniversaries for Rex and Hilda, and Adam and Amanda tomorrow, may we celebrate life. Holy Sustainer, we continue to pray for those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up those mourning the absence of folks we've had the privilege of holding dear. 
People of the resurrection still struggle with the missing. We pray for our world, national, and local leaders, and we pray that we will each be builders of people and communities. We pray for the work of the first part of the California-Nevada UMC Annual Conference this weekend and those who are being newly ordained to ministry even today. We pray for churches and pastors and congregation members in transition this week. We lift up disasters in our land and those affected by the heat now and health issues, including for Trish, Mildred, Bobby, Jim, Connie, Megan, Jeannie, Laura, Rex, Bev, Gary, Janie, Gloria, Betty, Meg, Sumi, and others we now name in our hearts. We pray for peace that passes understanding, glimpses of hope, touches of grace, and a deep sense of your abiding presence, Lord. May we carry on in the name of our mighty healer who calls us to be healed and to be instruments of healing. Even as we joyfully and confidently lift our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. UMCM is grateful for the many ways you live into being the church, living, loving, and serving as the body of Christ, sharing the good news. Together we've been trusted We've been entrusted with all that we are and all that we have that we might use our resources of time, talents, efforts, words, works, prayers, presence, and possessions in honor of God who gives us so much. Gifts to the church, whether placed in the offering plate on site, given online, or mailed in, whether produced as service in the food pantry, caring for the church in ministry or in study, whether in prayer or encouragement, help support ministry in the church, providing a safe space for all and practicing radical hospitality. We are indeed blessed to be a blessing. Thank you. Your gifts matter. Nurturing God, each day we witness untold miracles that are a testament of your love. Some spectacular miracles reverently remind us of Jesus' healing miracles, other everyday miracles are quiet and soft like a gentle mother's whisper filled with beauty and wonder. We prayerfully ask that these gifts be used to touch those needing to experience the miracle of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear now the benediction. Christ's touch has healed you. God's love has restored you. The Spirit goes with you. Go in peace and to share the joy of God's love. Amen. Worship you. 
You are our way maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Go in peace.